Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today it is a best of Crafty Beach where I put together 10 of my favorite patriotic 4th of July DIYs. The first one is a crowd favorite. It's my little red wagon filled with fireworks. Let's do Dollar it. Dollar Tree ideas of projects that you can make to get ready for the 4th of July. So I am planning on making a little red wagon out of these supplies I got at the Dollar Tree. I just got a wood tray. These wood dowels, they're kind of the shorter ones. They come quite a few in a package. I'm going to need three. And then just two popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree. And I have just a little, um, one of the wood cubes from the Dollar Tree. And I got this cute little bulldozer. Um, actually, it's a dump truck, isn't it? <laughs> from the Dollar Tree from the toy department. So first, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sanding. It was in pretty good condition, but I don't like the holes on the ends of the tray. I want my wagon to be like solid. So I thought I could use these little do wood dominoes that um, I got at the toy department at Dollar Tree, of course. And I glued that one on upside down. I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm just using some hot glue and gluing that opening shut on the side. So those will be like the front and the back of my little red wagon. And I'm making this for 4th of July, but you know, you could use this for any holiday really. And to fill up that hole now that I have the domino on the back, I'm just using some of the spackling from the Dollar Tree. And it was a pretty large opening there, so it did take some doing to get that spackling to stay in there and to try to get it smoothed out with my little putty knife from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. And you totally don't have to do this step, but I do like how it looks. Um, it, it looks like it was just a solid tray. You can't really tell that I did any patching there. Now, I need to paint these guys black. I'm just using some black acrylic paint. And I'm painting two popsicle sticks and three of the dowels. I thought um, one of those dowels I could use for the handle and I could use uh, the other two um, for, I guess, the axles for the wheels. And then I thought the little cube for a handle, um, for the handle, <laughs> and um, I thought the popsicle sticks to, you'll see. <laughs> so I'm just painting um, all around, all the sides, and one coat is plenty because that's like an unfinished wood. So here is my little dump truck from the Dollar Tree. And all I need off this guy is his wheels. And the back ones popped off fairly easy. Now the front ones were really on there. And I was struggling popping these off. They did not want to come off. And so I'm actually using some tools here to try to pry them off. And that worked. I didn't want to damage them at all. I wanted them to still be intact. And I think these will be the perfect size for my little red wagon. So I said it was going to be red, right? So I'm going to use this crimson chalk paint by Waverly that I picked up at Walmart. And I am gonna give just a very healthy coat. The unfinished wood and the chalk paint is a great combination. You really only have to do um, one coat. With the red though, you know, it's a little hard to get good coverage. So I'm just gonna kinda paint it until it is good and red. So I give a good coat to all the sides and even the bottom. 
and I'm just speeding that up a little bit there with my heat gun and the chalk paint dries so quickly. I love it. And then I am just giving just a little bit more touch up on some of the places that looked a little streaky. Then I don't know what I was thinking, um, leaving all of those painted pieces on that paper because of course they stuck. I should have left them on my silicone mat. So I am pulling them off, but there's paper stuck to them. So I'm trying to use my little sanding block there to get off <laughs> the extra paper. And I'm actually having to touch up some of the paint. And so there are my three black dowels and my popsicle sticks. Same thing. Lesson learned. Don't leave them on paper. <laughs> and I am just giving those a dry since I did have to touch up the paint a little bit. And look at this. The wheels fit perfectly on that dowel. And my idea is coming together here. So that will be one set of wheels and this will be the other set of wheels. So to attach them, I'm just gonna use hot glue and do a strip of hot glue and glue down that wood dowel. Just kind of where I think the front and the back wheels of the wagon would be. Then I'm just cleaning up some of the extra hot glue now I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with the sides because I don't have a pen or anything to keep the wheel on. So I was brainstorming. I thought these little tiny rubber bands that I got at the Ballard Tree, you get like a million in a package and there are black ones in there. So I am just winding that rubber band around and around and around until it's tight to hold the wheel on to the side of the dowel. And it actually worked out really well. And the wheels are actually functional, functionable. You can actually um, move the wagon forward and backwards. And I love that. I really didn't know if I was gonna be able to pull that off or not. So I just put one rubber band on each wheel there. And look at that, pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I need something I don't really know what this is called, but the structure on the front of a little red wagon that holds um, the handle. And so I'm just kind of taking my popsicle sticks and I trim them to size. I'm gluing them together into a point. So one on top of another, and then I'm just using hot glue to attach that to the bottom and the front of my wagon there. And I think that will work perfectly to hold my um, handle for the wagon. Then I had extra pieces of the popsicle stick and I'm like, that would make a way better little handle than the cube that I was thinking about using. So I decided to save one of those. And then I'm just gonna put a healthy drop of hot glue on there and sit my handle in place. I kind of want the handle to be pushed back like that. That reminds me of a wagon. And then I'm just gonna use that tiny um, piece of the popsicle stick a little handle there and just gonna hot glue that right on top and look at that we have a little red wagon I love how this turned out but I'm like it's not complete I want it to be a radio flyer wagon so I went online and I found like the radio flyer um, logo and I'm gonna attempt here to cut it out on Cricut vinyl and I had a little bit of trouble um, with one of the letters I think it was the O was fighting me there but I got it so I um, made I cut out one for each side <laughs> that's me struggling with that letter and then I'm just gonna put my transfer paper on there. I like this papery kind, I get this on Amazon. I will post a link below and I love it. It works so well to transfer Cricut vinyl. 
And one of them was a little crazy there, so I was just trying to fix it. And I am just going to put that on the side. And look at that. Now it is a radio flyer wagon, which I love that. It is awesome. It reminds me of when I was a kid. It's a classic little red wagon. And I think it's going to be perfect for my 4th of July decorations. And there we go, Little Red Wagon. Well, the Little Red Wagon needs something to put in it. So I was thinking of firecrackers, right? Fireworks. Now, I had heard that you can make firecrackers out of the little coin wrappers from the Dollar Tree. So that is what I'm going to try to do. I have some of these paper um, star patriotic um, pennant, I guess they're pennant banners. Um, that I thought would be perfect to cover the outside of the coin wrappers and to make them into like little firecrackers. And so I kind of cut that one to size and I'm just using a glue stick and I am just going to wrap that around my coin holder. I chose the ones that were red and blue so that if any of it showed, it would be okay. I think it was the penny and the nickel, maybe. I used two different sizes, And then I'm like, okay, so I need like a circle for the end. And so I am drawing a circle. And I just need to glue that on. And I was struggling with this. One end of the coin wrapper has like a folded down edge and it's really easy to attach it to that, but the other side is wide open and so there's not a lot to glue it to. So I tried hot glue, which was probably a little bit of an overkill, but it got, it got on there. And then it's going to need like a wick. So I'm going to need another circle for the other side. And I'm just going to use um, twine. So I'm going to use a hole puncher to punch through my circle. And then I'm going to take some of this twine and tie a knot in it. And cut that, string that through and then cut it to size. And that will be the end of my firework and I'm using hot glue again here because I hadn't quite figured it out yet I get better <laughs> as I go with the fireworks and the hot glue I mean it wasn't a very good solution but there is my first one and I thought I could fill the back of my radio flyer wagon with these little fireworks. And I thought that'd be a cute decoration. So not all of the paper and the banners are um, starred. So I'm only using the ones that have stars on them. And so here I am doing a second one. And the glue stick worked really well. Um, the paper was fairly light. And it went on pretty well. And so I'm cutting another circle for the end. Actually, I doubled up. I was smart there and cut both at the same time. And I'm trying to use um, the glue stick again. And there's just nothing on one end, like, at all to, like, glue stuff to. And so that made it harder. And then I'm just doing another wick and gluing that on. And the bottom is falling off again, and so I was trying to use hot glue there. And so there we go. We have a second one. <laughs> and I am continuing to learn how to do this right. Um, gluing the paper to the roll was fine. It was just the ends that I was having trouble with. And so I'm gluing that on with the glue stick. And 
it didn't work. So I tried again. Because I really don't want to use the hot glue for this. And then I come to the realization that, you know, you're probably not going to be able to see the bottom of them anyway, the way I'm going to sit them in there. And so, you know, they probably don't even need a bottom. They, the top is more important and the top like actually has something to glue it to. So I was like, you know what? I don't think they need to have bottoms. <laughs> and so that solved a lot of my problems right there. So I am just getting smart and cutting out a lot of them at a time and using the same size coin wrapper. And I can even cut the circles and punch them all at once and kind of set it up as an assembly line here. So now I'm just putting the little circle with the wick on top of the firework and I'm just leaving the bottom open and that solved all my problems that I was having. And then they started going pretty fast. So one package of those paper star um, banners only had six of the starred ones. So that made six fireworks but that was not enough so I opened another package of the banners and I'm like heck I'm gonna do all the same size here and then they'll all this will be all easy I'll cut them all out at once and that is what I did and cut out circles for the tops of all of them as well and you can see now I am like whipping them out <laughs> glue roll it up stick it to it then I can go through and I can put the wicks on the ends of all of my firecrackers. So this is so easy. You just tie a knot and cut it to size and then just string them on after you punch holes in them with your hole puncher. And so I'm thinking about a dozen of the firecrackers will fill up the back of my little radio flyer wagon just fine. And that's going to make a really fun 4th of July decoration for my house. And we did it. Isn't that adorable? I really love it. I hope you enjoyed that little wagon DIY. I still have that. I love it so much. You can use it for any holiday as well. And then up next, we're going to have a Kirkland dupe. We're going to do an America the Beautiful sign. And it's so pretty. Next is this America the Beautiful wood wall hanging. And it's $25 on Kirkland's website. And I'm gonna recreate that with this wood round that I got at Target in their craft apartment. They are $5 and it is a 12 inch wood round. And I'm just going over that with ivory chalk paint by Waverly that I got at Walmart. I really prefer the ivory compared to the white. I have a lot of ivory in my house and so I think it totally um, looks a little nicer than the stark white. So I use a lot of it. Like this is the end of this bottle. I had to go buy more. So I just gave it one good coat and then I am going around the sides and giving it a good paint job. Now this is a 12 inch wood ring. And so when um, I print out my stencil, I did 12 inches, but I, I didn't take into account that fancy trim around the edges. So it is a little big, but I make it work. So the one coat of the chalk paint is on and then I give it a good dry with my heat gun. And then I'm just gonna go over it with a thin second coat. I really want coverage. I really want it to be white. I don't want any of the wood to show through on this one. And then a quick around the edge. And I'm just trying to get maximum coverage. I really want this sign to pop. And I designed the design for this actually on my iPad when I was at the car dealership waiting for my oil change. <laughs> and um, so I don't have the footage of that, but I do, I did write down what fonts I used. And um, how I did that was I went to defont.com and I typed in the uh, phrases that were on the sign and then I went through and tried to find a font that looked like theirs to kind of do a copycat. And I think I got pretty close. 
So that is good and painted and where it's time to make our stencil. I don't want to use vinyl on this. I want it to be a hand painted sign. I think it looks way classier and I just love a good hand painted wood round. They're great. So I'm going to use this Cricut stencil vinyl. You don't have to use the stencil vinyl, but I had it. So why not? And, um, it's, it's a good, it's a good stencil. It really is. I really like this stuff. Um, it's not super sticky, so it's not going to damage my paint job and it's got the grid makes things easy to line up. So I'm just rolling that out and cutting how much I need. And I am going to have my Cricut cut out the stencil for us to make the sign. And so what it's going to say is America the Beautiful. So here I am just weeding out. It's kind of um, the reverse of what I did on that last stencil. Um, because I'm actually just making a stencil where I'm going to, you know, make America the Beautiful black. And then I'm going to have colored stars on there. The cursive weed's so cool when it all comes out one piece like that. And so America the Beautiful with two stars on the side. America and Beautiful, the font from defont.com is just one. And that's just one word. Just one. One word. And um, the was Amatamora was the font that I used for those. I went and looked those up for you because I think it's a really close match to what Kirkland's used. Now here... I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I could just peel it off as a sticker and stick it on there. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I am like totally losing like the like little parts inside the letters. I'm like, yeah, those are important. Maybe I shouldn't do it like this. Okay, yeah. So let me fix my damage here. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It's been a while since I've made a stencil, obviously. And I'm like, okay, I do need to use transfer paper because I want to get as much of that stencil as I can on there in one piece. So again, I'm just using this paper, transfer paper that I get on Amazon, and I will post a link below. It's fantastic. And um, just smoothing that on with my little Cricut scraper and still some of the letters, um, the parts did not come off. I don't know if I didn't scrape it down good enough. So I'm just basically taking that off, flipping them and lining them up and putting them back on there and trying to get it as close as possible to where it should be on those three pieces. Okay, now the stencil is ready. So here is my painted wood round, and then I'm just gonna kinda cut off the sides so I can kinda get this aligned better so I can see what I'm doing. And this is where I noticed that it was a little too big. And so my America, like the A on the right and the L on the right both get cut off um, a tiny bit but then I'm like oh that's okay I just won't paint there and it, it actually turned out just fine and it's super huge and effective the, the statement and so I'm just peeling off the stencil transfer paper and making sure that it's really good and attached I'm going through with my Cricut scraper and trying to get it down because I don't want any bleeding. That's the worst part about hand painting sides is when you get bleeding. So this is my strategy. I'm like Mod Podge. No, I don't want glossy. I know I got matte in here somewhere. And so I'm going to use Mod Podge matte. And I heard that if you do the stencil first with Mod Podge, you get less bleeding like it seals it. And for some reason, when I went to pour the Mod Podge out, I poured out tons. So I had this paper towel because I was trying to clean up my mess. And then I'm just like, oh, heck, I'm not going to even use a paintbrush. I'm just going to use the paper towel. So I'm just using the paper towel and I am Mod Podging all over the stencil, trying to make sure that it is good and down. And this is the first time I've used Mod Podge with a stencil. And I would say it, it was a success. I think I would definitely do it again. So the edges, like where the A's are, like they're cut off a little bit. So I'm trying to make sure I really get that good and down. I'm trying to pour my Mod Podge back into my container. It was thinner than I was used to, and it just kind of went everywhere. <laughs> OK, 
okay, so I'm giving it a dry. I want to get that Mod Podge dry so that I can start painting the sign. And I'm gonna use, this is just black acrylic paint and I'm using one of those little stencil foam stencil, stencil daubers that you get at the Dollar Tree. And I am just daubing that on like, I don't want it to be heavy. I don't want to brush it on. I don't want it to go underneath the stencil. And so I am just going across and trying to get America, trying to get the best coverage that I can and trying not to go off my stencil there. And then I go over here on the side and I do go off the stencil and I'm like, oh, I knew better. Why didn't I use painter's tape on the side of here? So I'm just using a baby wipe and trying to get that black paint off the side. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, do it right, Julie. So I'm going in and using that painter's tape from the Dollar Tree and just taping around my stencils just for a safeguard so that does not happen again. And I'm just being really careful there that I don't finish that letter that's cut off. And you can't tell. I was hoping that would be the case. So I'm going to go over the word the with black. Their sign was white with America the Beautiful was in black. And then they had a blue and red stars on the side. And so that's what I'm trying to recreate here. I think I did a really good job of copying their font. It's very similar. And just daubing that all over. I kind of used a little bit more paint than I would like there on the bottom, but it worked. And then I, I could see some white speckling coming through some of the letters, um, the black letters. Um, so I was trying to get maximum coverage. So I'm just going over with a second coat with my little dauber and getting that good and covered. You want to add more paint this is the time to do it not after you take the stencil off for sure so i'm gonna do the stars this is called candy apple it is just acrylic paint from target and it's just a bright red and i don't have any more daubers so i'm just gonna use small foam brushes and just kind of daub it on so you can totally do that as well and theirs had two red stars on the outside, so I'm doing the same. And then I'm gonna make the other stars two blue, which is a tiny amount of blue paint that I have left. And um, we'll do the same thing with a little foam brush and daub that on. Kinda looks a hot mess right now, doesn't it? <laughs> And I see some white coming through, so I'm kind of going in with like even a third coat because I really want that black to be clear and bold and I don't want it to look rustic. This one, I actually want it to look really crisp. The original was really crisp. And so that is what I'm going for. And I'm giving it a good dry with my heat gun. And so this sign um, at Kirkland's is $25 and I'm using a $5 wood round um, plus just the cost of the vinyl and paint and the bow. I got the bow that I'm gonna use, a Dollar General for $2.50. So definitely a good bargain on this one as well. And I've given it a good dry. And then I think ready to take the painter's tape off. Are you ready for the big reveal? I was a little nervous. This part's either really satisfying or really disappointing. And so far I'm like very satisfied. I only had a tiny, tiny bit of bleeding um, on that L, maybe because I was trying to be really careful, the L over on the side that was cut off and kind of a little bit on the cursive word, the, but I was able to weed out the rest of that vinyl and kind of touch it up with just my weeding tool from Cricut. And over there on the right, I did not get all the black paint off. So I'm just going to go and touch that up with a little ivory over on the side so you don't see that. 
and I did notice at the top there where on the corners it was very hard to get the um, vinyl down and so what bled was actually the Mod Podge so I guess it did its job so I'm gonna give that a good dry and you can kind of see um, where the Mod Podge um, did bleed and the stars were coming up a little bit almost a little bit like a sticker so here I am touching it up and trying to make it beautiful. And then I decided to go over um, the whole thing with Mod Podge um, to seal it and to cover up the Mod Podge that bled through so that won't be as obvious. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing with a good coat of the Mod Podge. And this is a matte. I didn't really want a gloss to the sign. I wanted it to look very um, chalky with the chalk paint on there. And I think this helped. It helped seal the stars down and um, cover up any imperfections from the Mod Podge. And then I'm gonna give it a good dry with my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can always use a blow dryer does the same thing and it may take a little bit longer. And here's the bow that I got at Dollar General. Their bow was a big poofy bow like this to hold the sign and theirs was red. I couldn't really find a red one and I didn't really wanna make it. So um, I thought this would be give me the same effect because it's the flag pattern with the stars and the stripes. So I am just taking the back and um, trying to get rid of that little foil um, wire that's holding it on like a bread tie and looping that in case I want to hang it. I'm not going to hang it with that because this has really good hangers on the back of the wood sign and it's heavy. Um, but I'm just going to give it the appearance that I am um, hanging it with it. So I'm just going to glue the ribbon onto the back just with hot glue. And I actually, when I hang it, this, the, the bow, I just use like a, um, one of those command adhesive strips to hold that up because I didn't really want to put another hole in the wall to hold that up, but I'm just going to use a nail for the wood sign. So I lost some footage here, but basically all you missed is I um, hot glue um, the ribbon onto the back real quick. My battery died in my hot glue gun. This thing eats the batteries. I love it though. It must take a lot of um, energy to heat the glue that hot. So I am just waiting on that to heat up, which is probably why I end up losing the footage. <laughs> but I absolutely love how this sign turned out. And I got the greatest compliment from my 16 year old a while ago. I was like, oh, come here, look at the original. And so I showed him the original and he was like, oh, I like yours better. And I'm like, oh, thanks. I love it. So there I glued it on and I'm just gonna go in and glue it on a little better from the back. Just kind of giving it the appearance that the bow is holding the sign up, even though I'm gonna use that little saw too. Isn't that sign pretty? It's so classic, I love it. Okay, ready for some fun? I have some his and her patriotic sock gnomes. And I am going to make some sock gnomes today. I found these great socks at Target in the women's socks department. Our Target has them back by the shoe department. And I thought they were perfect for a 4th of July gnome. One is red and white stripes and one is blue and white stars. And so I won't have any extra socks or anything. And I thought I could make two gnomes. I could use one leg um, for the hat in stripes and one in stars. And so I cut off the leg part of the socks like that. And I just have the foot part for the bodies. Now I need to weigh my sock gnomes down. I'm just gonna use some of this um, OxyClean from the Dollar Tree. It's just what I have to weigh down the bottom. You have to weigh down the bottoms because you don't want your gnome to fall over. And um, you can use anything. You can use rice, um, beans, rocks, just whatever you have. So I'm trying to weigh it down with that. And I am just gonna use polyfill um, that from an old pillow to stuff my gnomes. 
I don't want them to be very large, so I'm not going crazy with the stuffing. I'm just stuffing a little bit. And I am planning to use those little wood beads there that I use for my wood bead garlands. I um, get those on Amazon. I'll post a link below for those. They're great for the noses. So I don't have to use like a white sock underneath. I can just use the decorative socks for the body and that is making it even easier one less step. So once I get them stuffed, I just use some of this jute twine from the Dollar Tree and just tie that off. And I have my first gnome body. I'm just gonna trim off the excess sock and I'm gonna do that with my red and white striped gnome body as well. Easy peasy, we have two gnome bodies. Now, I want to try to use this part for the hat. Now, I need it to be like in the tip of a hat to make it pointy on one end. So the first thing I tried was just to tie it into a knot and I didn't really like how that looked. So I decided to untie that and just try to gather it um, at one end and try to make it look pointy. I don't want to sew it or anything. I think I can get away with just pinching it and tying it off into a little pointy end. You can always use like the paper party hats and stuff like that or um, sound makers from the Dollar Tree to make a pointy um, thing, but I'm planning on um, stuffing this one. And so I think it'll stand up just fine without any kind of um, structure in there. So again, I'm using that, just stuffing from an old pillow and I'm just kind of shaping it trying to make it look pointy like a gnome hat would. And I'm gonna do the striped hat with the star body and the starred hat with the striped body. I've never made his and her gnomes before, but I thought that that would be really cool since I have exactly the right amount of socks to do that with. So I get that hat good and stuffed and I'm just shaping it and I am going to try that on to my little gnome body to see um, how they work together. And once I get it on here and stand it up, it is hilariously like way too big. They're like really long like knee socks. And I'm like, oh, this isn't gonna work. So I actually only end up using probably about half of that and um, I tried to tie it off again, but it had too much stuffing in there, so it kind of fell apart right there. So I'm pulling out some of that excess stuffing after I cut it in half and just cutting off more twine and just doing the same thing I did before, just pinching it on one end to try to make it skinny on the top of the hat and just tying that off. And I'm just shaping it again, trying to get it more of a pointy look at the end of the hat and trying it on again and this hat works this is way more to scale that was hilarious when i got it on there i was like wait a minute this isn't gonna work and then i plan on just attaching the wood bead for the nose like that and have it like tucked underneath the hat so like it looks like the hat is pulled over the little gnome's eyes and i think that's gonna work I'm just kind of moving around the weights in the bottom to make sure that it is not gonna fall over on me and i decided i wanted something for the top I had some like fluffy pom-poms from Easter, but I thought that was too, too pretty. So I decided to use some of this jute twine from the Dollar Tree and just wrap it around three fingers like that. And then I'm just gonna use that jute at the top to tie that on. And it's just gonna make a fun rustic little pom-pom made out of jute. So cutting that in half after I get it tied on just gives me a messy little pom-pom for the top of the hat. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm just cutting off, um, the excess sock there from the tip of the hat and just kind of arranging it, seeing what it's gonna look like. I decided it's a little too long, so I give it a little trim. And it's not a real thick pom-pom, it's just kind of a little messy one and I like how it turned out. Now I'm going to attach the nose with just hot glue. I put it on there with one of the holes like underneath the hat and one of the holes like down towards the gnome body so that you can't see the holes in the little wood bead. And that's a perfect little nose. I really liked using the wood bead for the nose. So much easier. And he is complete. I'm not gonna give him any arms or legs, just a nose and a body and a hat. 
and I'm just trying, um, pulling off any extra hot glue I had there and time to make this one into a gnome. I decided I wanted this one to be the girl gnome. So using a mop from the Dollar Tree, I've never used one of these before, but it worked really well. I'm just pulling out some of the strings and they're easy to pull out without taking it apart or anything. And I'm just kind of measuring her hair. I decide to do uh, three pieces for each side. Um, that would be perfect to make little braids for my girl gnome. And I'm just kind of seeing what that would look like. And I'm just using my hot glue and I'm just gonna hot glue her hair underneath the hat on the side of her nose. And it doesn't take just a few drops of the hot glue to secure those on there. And then I'm gluing the hat to them as well. And then I was gonna unravel them into each piece goes like into four pieces, but I decided three would be perfect because I'm gonna braid it. So I don't think I need to unravel it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue the three pieces of hair onto her other side and glue the hat on top of them. This is my first girl gnome that I've ever done. And I think she turned out really cute. So now that I have her hair on there, all I do is just a simple braid until I get to the end of her hair. And then I'm just gonna use that same twine that I use for the pom-pom and everything else and just tie the bottom of her braid. And then I wanted to tie a little bow with that. I really did not cut it long enough and so I did struggle a little bit here, but I do finally get a little tiny bow there for the end of her braid with a little bit of patience. <laughs> There we go, her first braid. And then I just trimmed off some of the excess that was like different lengths and quick braid on the other side as well. And I love her, I think she turned out so freaking cute. So just tying that off and make it a bow. This time I left it a little longer so it was a little easier to tie, just a simple bow. And then all she needs is her hair trimmed there at the bottom and she is looking really good. I thought she needed one more touch. And so I have these little bike charms that I got at the dollar spot for a dollar at Target. And they're just little blue and red plastic stars. And they actually go onto the spokes of a bike. So I was trying to like kind of just put it on the twine, but it wouldn't really stay on there. So I do end up having to go in and attach them with a little hot glue. I was just gonna use one, but then I thought it would be cute to use um, both colors together, just for a little final touch on the top of her hat. I've never made a small gnomes like this before, but I think it's like a really cute size because you could also use it for like um, tear trays and stuff as well. It would fit really nicely. And here I am just attaching those little stars with the hot glue. And gnome number one is done. Let's see if we're gonna call him Uncle Sam for the 4th of July, maybe she can be Samantha, right? <laughs> and I'm just trimming that up a little more until I'm happy with it and she is complete. So now it's time to make Sam, I guess. So he's gonna have, um, the uh, star hat, just using my little ladybug there to clean up my mess. I love that little craft vacuum. I'll post a link below for that as well. I got that on Amazon and it works great. And I am using that excess piece of sock to know exactly how long I want this sock to be. So I don't make the mistake of making this hat too long like I did on the first one. And so I'm just tying off the end with some twine. And these sock gnomes are so easy. Um, they're so expensive to buy. And I love being able to customize these for any season that I want. And I really love putting them together. I think they're so much fun. So I'm just using some of that polyfill from the pillow and stuffing this hat as well. And just kind of messing with it, shaping it, trying to get it to a pointy hat and trying that on our little striped body. and kind of measuring with my other gnome to make sure they are about the same size, readjusting um, that OxyClean I put in the bottom 
uh, to make sure that it's not gonna fall over. And I am making a pom-pom for the top of his hat as well, just by wrapping twine around my fingers, three fingers, until it gets as thick as I think I want it, and just using that same twine at the top just to tie that off. Such an easy way to make a little pom-pom and to give a little bit of fun to the top of that hat. This one I think I cut longer, so it did involve a little bit of trimming here. And just cutting off the extra um, part of the sock there at the tip. And I got that just how I like it. Now it's time to add his little nose. And again, I'm just gonna attach it with a dot of hot glue to the inside sock and a dot of hot glue to the sock that goes over the top just a little so his nose peeks out. And he's gonna need a beard. And so I kind of measure how long I want his beard to be. And I decided I wanna do, um, I think it was four pieces on each side of his nose. So I'm gonna do it just like I did her hair. I'm just gonna attach that with hot glue just under the brim of the hat. And I'm just gonna do the sides first. I'm just gonna kinda cut that off because it's way too long. And do four pieces here for the other side. And I'm just, he's gonna have a beard, he's gonna have a mustache. And this part is super fun and super easy. So now I need to do some shorter parts there um, that I have left over for his mustache. And so again, just using hot glue, I am gonna glue his mustache on. And now he has a cute a little beard. Now I was, I kind of want it to be like pointy, like Uncle Sam seems to have like a pointy beard and um, so do gnomes usually. So I'm just gonna start trimming it until I get it into like more of a triangular shape with the point towards the bottom. Like that. Then I want it to be a big full beard, so I am gonna unwind his um, mop heads. Each piece goes into four strands if you just unwind them, and it gives you um, these cute little wavy um, pieces of yarn inside that mop, and I really like how it turned out. I've never made a beard, a uh, gnome beard with one of these. I've used um, the microfiber uh, mop heads from the Dollar Tree, and I've used white yarn from the Dollar Tree. And this kind of gives you the same effect of a, like a really thin yarn, but you get four for each piece there. So super detailed, super easy. And I am just unwinding every single one of those. And there's his cute little beard. I do think he does need a little bit more trimming. And so I do trim it up a little bit shorter here and two of those bike stars for his hat as well, hot glued, and we have two gnomes. Aren't they cute? Oh my gosh. I love these guys. I think they're adorable. So fun. Those little gnomes are so cute. Okay, up next, we're gonna have another Kirkland dupe. This is a Let Freedom Ring sign, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I put it together. Okay, first we're gonna do this Let Freedom Ring wooden wall plaque available at Kirkland's for $20. And we are going to dupe this with this $5 chalkboard from the dollar spot at Target. It's in their like little wedding section right now. That's why the frame is white. And I am gonna do something about that. So I am just gonna use some of this painter's tape from the Dollar Tree and just tape off the inside. I don't wanna get any paint on the inside of the chalkboard. And what I'm gonna use is this Waverly Antique Wax. And it's kinda like a stain, but it's like way faster and easier to work with. And I am going to see if I can change that white frame and make it look like a wood frame like the original. 
So I'm just gonna use a foam brush. I love these, you don't get any of the little brush hairs on things, and but you still get like the wood grain look with the antique wax. So I am going all over. Since it was so light, the frame, you can tell that one coat is only gonna give me like a light wood color. And so I'm definitely gonna have to go in with the second coat once I get this on and get this dry. I do go a little heavier on the inside rim, so I don't have to do that one again. And I am just going to speed that up with my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can always use like a blow dryer. Um, anything like that's going to speed up your crafting. You're not going to have to let things sit to dry, especially in between coats like this. And I'm just using my tiny brush to kind of get in on the corners to make sure I don't have any white peeking through. And here is that second coat of the antique wax. And this is what I was going for. I'm going for like a medium wood look. And I'm trying to keep um, my strokes all the same direction on the sides to give it that nice wood grain feel. You just have to kind of be careful on the corners. Um, that when I'm doing one side, I don't kind of, you know, go into the grain on the other side. So once I get a good second coating on there, I am ready to give it a dry. And I'm gonna start the drying process on this and then just let it sit to get really good and dry. So while that's doing that, I'm gonna go into Cricut Design Space and I'm just gonna make a rectangle the same size as my chalkboard. So I can visually see what I am working with. So I make the word freedom, that's the largest word on the sign. And I find this cursive font that's similar to theirs, but not quite the same, but I think it will work. And their sign says, let freedom ring. And freedom is the largest word. So I'm kind of doing the let and ring as a smaller version of that word and trying to see how they had theirs fit together on their sign. And I, I noticed that the L is completely different than the L that they use. So I am hunting um, for a different font and this L is really close, but the rest of the words not. So what I'm gonna do is use that cursive L, but then use the original font and just kern those letters to get those cursive letters touching. And just, you have to kind of fuss with this to get it exactly the way that you want it. And then I'm like, it should be bigger. So I'm going to do freedom should be about 80% of the board. So it did that bigger, kind of made let and ring bigger too. And I think that's it. We're ready to cut. So I'm going to do a test for you today. This is the Cricut vinyl from the Dollar Tree. I have white vinyl, but I'm always up for a test for you guys. So it's a really long um, word that we're cutting. So I have to use my extra long Cricut mat for this. So I am just putting down my white permanent vinyl and using my rotary cutter to cut that off. And there is a small wrinkle over here. I try to get rid of it, but I don't think my letters will go quite that far over. So I don't think it's going to cause any kind of problem. So it is ready to go into my Cricut and just make sure you have it set to vinyl, load your mat and just hit the flashing Cricut button and let it do its thing. And this seems like it is dry. So I am going to go in and remove the painter's tape. And this now looks way closer to the original. And I'm just going to go over it with like a cleaning wipe and make sure it's good and clean. I want the um, vinyl to be able to stick to it really well and then give it a dry with a paper towel. And it should be ready to go. Okay, here is our, the vinyl that was cut out on the Cricut. And first I'm going to cut off my extra but this is a problem that I've been having with the Dollar Tree vinyl. 
For some reason it rips, it sticks to my mat, and I've never had that problem before, so I must be using a poor quality for the backing paper. And I am gonna start at the corner and weed this, and it weeds fantastic. The only problem is it's white on white, so this part was kind of challenging because the cursive letters had all these loops and they all had little pieces that needed to be weeded out and it was hard to see the white on white for sure. But I'm getting it done here. I kind of love weeding. It's very therapeutic. And here is my favorite kind of transfer paper. This is like a papery transfer paper um, that I get on Amazon and I can post a link to that. Um, it's not super sticky and I love it. I get it like in the 12 inch rolls and like the six, six inch rolls. And I'm just using my scraper to scrape my vinyl onto my transfer tape and there, see, I missed a spot because I couldn't see on the weeding. So that looks wonderful. And it is ready to apply to my sign. So I'm kind of lining it up the way that they had it on theirs and scraping that vinyl down. And look at that Dollar Tree vinyl for the win. It came out beautiful. I love the way that the sign turned out. Okay, the last step is they had a wooded, wood, a wood beaded garland along the top of their frame. And so I'm using these wood beads that I got on Amazon and I can post a link to these as well. This is like my fourth or fifth project I've used with them and I still have quite a few left. And then also these wood stars that I got at, I think, Dollar General the other day. And I am gonna paint that red, that star red um, with this crimson um, chalk paint by Waverly and kind of make it look like the wood star that they have on their garland. And, you know, in painting anything red, it's hard to get good coverage, especially, you know, even on like the raw wood like that. So I give it a good first coat and then go in with my heat gun and try to get that dry. And then I see some wood peeking through. So um, I do go in with another coat here of the red chalk paint. and get it good and covered. Okay, so on theirs they had four small gold beads, four small red beads, and five large white beads. So that's what I'm gonna try to duplicate. So I'm trying to use these big skewers, the ones for like the hot dogs. I love those, but they're just too big for this project, for those little beads. So I have to find the small bamboo skewers and I don't like these as well because the beads do kind of spin around when you try to paint them. But if you stack them on top of each other like this, it's not too bad. And I'm just going in and doing the top half of each bead. And they don't move too bad when they're sitting on each other like that. And then flip it over and do the top half of the other side. And these are so easy to paint. One coat, definitely enough. So I'm giving them a quick dry, just enough so that I can lay them down on my wax paper and start working on the next set of beads, which I'm doing the same size. And I'm doing this just gold acrylic paint that I think I've had forever. And I'm um, giving a quick touch up to my star over there. Saving my paint and going in and painting these four wood beads gold. And I'm just doing the same thing, doing the top half, stacking them on top of each other, flipping it over and getting the other sides. And I'm trying to build the garland to be like almost exactly the way that they have their garland since I'm trying to dupe it. And get that dry enough just to sit down on the wax paper and make sure that none of them are touching. So the large beads, I'm gonna use the large skewers these are great because the wood beads won't spin and I'm going to use that ivory chalk paint by Waverly. And I am going to go in and get these all painted. 
these are definitely the larger beads, so it does take a little bit more time to paint these. But I'm kind of doing the same thing, doing the top half, turning them over, and getting the other side. And I think that this is the end of that ivory chalk paint. And I think I've had the lid off of it maybe too many hours because it is a little chunky. This is my favorite color and I think I use it for everything. Okay, so those look good. So I'm gonna give those a quick dry. and lay those down on the wax paper as well. And I just wanna give the star a quicksand. They have like natural raw wood on the sides of their star and it kind of looks rustic. And some paint did go on the sides of my star so I was trying to clean that up just a little bit. Okay, so this is just the jute twine from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut off a long piece of that. And we are ready to start building. Okay, so I like to use, um, like, I'm just going to tie this in a knot. And I like to use this giant needle. But you can always just tape the end and make it like a makeshift needle. And I tied and tied and tied and tied the end of this but that bead was just large it just kept popping off i think i tied it like six times before <laughs> the bead would finally stay on there so i'm going to string it exactly the way that they have theirs white red gold white red and then that side of the beaded garland they have that tight and then they have a red wood star. So I am just gonna use hot glue and glue on that red star. And I'm like, oh, I can speed this up with a heat gun. And then I'm like, yeah, that's probably not gonna speed up hot glue, Julie. <laughs> I'm just making sure it's good and stuck on there. And adding some more hot glue. And then while that's drying, I can go ahead and string the rest of the beads. I like this technique for painting them because I find that no paint gets on the inside of the string. It makes it really easy to be able to string in them right away and they don't get any color onto the next bead. All right, so that's exactly how they had theirs. But this is also where I realized that I glued the star on upside down. So I have to flip it over and start over and re-glue that. I don't know what I was thinking on that. And just putting a big old dollop of hot glue on there. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna put another star on the back. That way it'll give it a chunkier appearance. It will sandwich that, you know, um, jute twine in between the two, make it sturdier. And I think that might look closer to the original. And then I'm just gonna go over and give that a good sand. Theirs looked like it was like maybe a little chipped around the corners. And so I'm trying to give it that same rustic vibe with just this little sanding block from the Dollar Tree. All right, I think we're done with that. So we are ready to attach our wood bead garland to our frame. Now they had their garland coming out from inside the frame and there's no way to do that with, you know, without taking it apart. So. I'm just gonna kind of give it the same look by attaching my twine um, behind the frame. That will make way more sense for our project and it'll look almost the same. So 
I am just going in. I have a knot on the end and I'm gonna staple that on the back of my frame and wouldn't you know it, no staples <laughs> on the first project. So I'm hunting for staples for my staple gun. I've had the staple gun for absolutely ever and it is fantastic. And I miss on the first one, so I go in with pliers and remove it, but then the second one's kind of good, but I go in with a hammer to make sure that it is in there really good. I don't want the beads to fall off. And then I am going to go in the left side of the beaded garland. They have it where you can kind of move the beads like an abacus. So that's what I'm going to go for. So I just removed the sawtooth hanger because it's kind of on the wrong side, the way that we're doing this. And I am just kind of seeing how I need to hang that where the beads will actually move and be kind of separated a bit. And that is where I'll staple it on the back on the side. And I just staple it and tie a knot on the end of that one and um, just trim off the ends of the string. on both sides and it's done we duped that $20 frame with this $5 frame and stay stick around till the end you'll get to see the reveal of all of our Kirkland's patriotic dupes today but first I'm going to reattach that sawtooth hanger to the back just kind of trying to find the middle of my sign so I know where to put it and this frame was soft enough wood that I was just able to hand screw those little screws back in with no problem whatsoever. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna hang this or sit it, but since I had the hanger, I thought I might as well put it on there and that will give me more options to decorate with this. Another classic patriotic sign that will not go out of style, I love that. Okay, so I'm going to get creative on our next flag DIY. We're going to use flowers. Okay, this is my next idea. I want to try to make a flag out of flowers. So I got these from the Dollar Tree. I got three of the red mums, three of the white roses, and two of the blue, what did that say, iris? And I'm just going to use one of these Dollar Tree signs. This is one of their nautical ones. It has this little bump out. I don't really want that on there because I want it to hang straight against the wall. And I also cut off the twine because I'm going to actually hang this sideways like a flag. And here I am just taking um, the white roses apart. I tried really hard to do three different kinds of flowers because I thought that's going to give more variety. So I'm trying to figure out, I really want red stripes on the top and red stripes on the bottom. So that's gonna involve three red stripes and two white stripes. So I really only needed two packages of the white and then I'm gonna fill in the blue quadrant with the blue flowers like that. I thought about attaching like floral foam or something to the front of it to stick it in, but then I was like, nah, I'll just hot glue it. Now here I'm, I'm snipping off the ends of the, the fake flowers and, and then hindsight, that ended up being a bad idea because some of the flowers that I did do that to ended up falling apart. I guess that's part keep helps keep the flower together. So don't do this part. Don't do the snip, snip, snip. I was doing that to try to make the flowers um, sit more flush with the wood sign and not at an angle, but it was a bad idea. As you can see here, um, some of them started to fall apart. And I'm having to fix that with some hot glue. And there is our first red stripe. And for some reason, I didn't learn my lesson. And I um, snipped some of the white ones as well. <laughs> and those fell apart too. So I am going in with another, my third white one there. And I have learned my lesson now. I am gluing them at an angle on one side of the little stem that's left on there. And they're just going to have to be in an angle like that. 
because I want my flowers to stay together. And so these are going in at an angle too for my red stripe. And I, I, you know, I've taken the flowers off the ends like that from the Dollar Tree and worked with them. I don't know what I was thinking with snipping it. I really didn't know they were going to fall apart like that, but lesson learned. And so I'm just going in and doing the same thing. Now this row and the next row are going to be shorter because I need to leave room for the blue flowers. And I'm kind of putting the flowers tight together but not too tight. I want to get those distinctive red and white stripes for the flag. And this is the last row of red. And since I um, kind of changed my plan there and they're kind of tighter together because they are um, at an angle like that, you could see some of the, the wood um, on that sign at the top, but I do go in here at the end and disguise that. So we have all of our red and white stripes done there. And now it is time to start working on the blue. And I think this project, it was so much fun and it was so quick and it turned out so cute. I really love it. I was trying to go with a flower flag without getting that, um, you know, arrangement that you would see like somebody putting on like a tombstone for Memorial Day or something like that and it actually turned out really cute and here I am just using some of those extra pieces of flowers um, that I had left over just to fill in some of those little areas where you could see the wood sign there at the top because I don't want any of the wood showing through and we have a flag I really like this flag, so fun. So all I'm gonna do is turn that sign over and I am gonna glue twine onto the back to make a hanger. And that is all there is to that project. I usually cover the back of my signs, but this was actually not dreadfully ugly. So I, I went ahead and left it like that, it was fine. No glitter on the sign, yay Dollar Tree. The flower flag turned out so cute. Okay, up next we have another Kirkland's dupe. This is gonna be like a shelf sitter sign and it's gonna be Home of the Brave and I'm gonna give you a Canva tutorial as well. Okay, this is our next dupe, Home of the Brave canvas art print available on Kirkland's website for $38. Okay. So I'm going to design this in Canva Pro. I love Canva Pro. It's so easy to work with. And my country tis of thee. I found the lyrics online and basically I am going to copy and paste those lyrics on this navy square that I made to represent my sign. And I'm just playing around going through all the different handwriting fonts to try to find a handwriting that's really similar to the one that they use. I want it to get the same vibe. And then I'm playing around with the spacing. They kind of have their centered. And then I noticed that they didn't do any capital letters. So that is some editing that I do is I go through there and I search and try to find all the capital letters and change those to lowercase letters. So it'll be like almost an exact dupe. And since I designed this on Canva, I should be able to share the link um, to my Canva design so that if you wanna recreate this, you can use my design and that will totally be free for you. This is my gift to you. And I will post that link in the description of this video. And I think I found all the 
capital letters. I, I just keep finding more. It was quite a bit of lyrics on there. And then I just get it centered the way that they had it. And I was gonna, you know, like just leave it like that and do like the United States and the home of the brave with vinyl. But then I was like, you know what? I might as well just do the whole project on here. It's so easy to design on Canva. So I type in like USA map, make it red. Then I am gonna do home and brave and big cursive fonts like theirs. And then I'm just going through their fonts that they have on here and trying to find one kind of close to the one that they used. And this one's really similar. So I am gonna do that for both home and brave. And they had those words like really large like that. And then I'm gonna add of the in like more of a typewriter font. And I'm just arranging it, trying to make it fit and, and trying to make it like really similar to the way that they have theirs on the original. And I'm even gonna add a little detail here a little flourish to extend my home to make it kind of like theirs. And they had one for Brave too, but the, my font, I can't really fit anything in there. So I'm looking for something, but I think I, I like it just the way it is. And I'm just, I'm learning how to use the flourishes. Um, I always see them and I never know how to do them. <laughs> I think some fonts come with flourishes, but you have to do maybe certain things to unlock them. I'm not sure about that. I'm determined. I think I'm going to find something here for sure. But I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Download it. And I am going to use this sign that I got today at the Dollar Tree. And it is an eight inch square sign. And I think it's going to be perfect. But I'm hoping that I can use my little Cricut spatula here to get this part of the sign off. As it's popping right off and I'm like, why is this even on here? If the same thing is underneath of it, how random. And then I realize, oh, they printed the signs upside down. So they had to go back and fix them. Very Dollar Tree, eh? So I printed that design out the same exact size as the sign. Um, and I actually printed it on cardstock, um, like an ivory cardstock that I had. Um, just because I want to Mod Podge it and I don't want any wrinkles. And I find that when you use like a thicker, um, cardstock, you have less wrinkles. So I'm just using Mod Podge matte and going in with a thin coat, making sure I have the top of the sign completely covered and then just laying my Home of the Brave cardstock on top. And this brayer is really good for this part to get it all smooth and to get any glue that comes out the sides. And I'm just getting, I had a loose corner there, putting a little bit more Mod Podge underneath that. Then the sides of the sign are like a dark wood, which would be fine, but doesn't really match anything in my house and doesn't really match like the sign. So I am gonna try to uh, mix my navy blue and um, some black together to try to make a really dark navy blue. I think that would match the sign. And while the Mod Podge is drying on the front, I am just gonna go in and give one coat of paint 
to the sides. And I'm really glad I did this step. I think it makes the sign look more um, put together and cohesive. And the color I mixed was actually pretty close. So now I'm gonna go over um, the paint on the sides with my heat gun and give that a dry and also try to um, get the Mod Podge um, dry too. And that cardstock went on very well, no wrinkles whatsoever. I have a lot of problems with wrinkles. I know a lot of times when the Mod Podge Dry, dries with like a thinner paper um the wrinkles leave but sometimes they don't so it's pretty good and dry so I am going to go over it with some Mod Podge to seal the top and it looks like I have some wrinkles there on the bottom but I don't so I don't know why it looks that way just the way the light was hitting um on the Mod Podge I think And so I am giving that a quick dry. I haven't Mod Podged anything like this in a while. Um, it was definitely um, fun. And the sign, I, I, I get almost an exact duplicate. So here I am just going over with another coat of Mod Podge to seal it. This time I went the other direction. I don't want too much of a green pattern going in the final finish of that. And it looks really good. Here I noticed that there's Mod Podge sticking out, so I just kind of Mod Podge the entire top and see if that helps. And giving that a quick dry as well. And I think the Mod Podge just kind of leaked up there and I didn't see it because it was away from me. And I'm trying to make it dry clear so that you can't see it. And it's not cooperating. So I'm like, you know what? I will paint it blue and you'll never know. <laughs> so I just put a second coat of that blue color that I mixed to fix. That turned out so pretty and it looks so professional. Okay, up next, let's do a 4th of July wreath using a little, little red truck from the Dollar Tree. Okay, project number three. Now these are the little red trucks they have at the Dollar Tree. And then I also found those wooden cutout heart, hearts, stars at Dollar Tree the other day, and they're so pretty. Now, this USA truck was already falling apart. The front bumper fell off all by itself. The back bumper was easy to pop off. And luckily, the glue that was attached to it just peeled right off too. So what I plan to do, since I don't like the way it is with all the glitter and I'm not dealing with that, is just flip it over and work on the back. Now, I don't really want to have to paint a flag on here, and so I'm just gonna use my ruler and my X-Acto knife and start scoring that, and I'm gonna try to pop that flag off. My other two little red truck projects um, had the American flag on the back, and so I can do something different with this one, and I thought I could use those beautiful wood cut out stars. I love those. They have lots of different things cut out, and they're like laser cut, they are incredible for a dollar. You get six of them. So I did get that popped off using my little cutting mat from the Dollar Tree and my X-Acto from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just using my sanding block and trying to get that level with the bed of the truck. And there we have it. And I saved my bumpers up there. Um... I'm gonna reuse those, and since I'm just doing like the mirror image of everything, they should fit just fine. Then I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of spackle from the Dollar Tree there to fill that little hole that was left from the single hanger. And this 
project evolved as I went. I really had no idea what I was going to do with this truck. And sometimes um, crafts just do that. They just grow and grow. And that's what this one did. So the first thing I want to concentrate on is the tires. And I know that I cannot draw a circle. So I was looking for anything about the same size that I could trace around. And I found that paint lid and that worked perfectly. It gave me a little circle and I am just using a black paint pen to try to draw the tires on. Um, I really not that great at hand painting, but paint pens are really easy because they're just like a marker. So if you can color with a marker, you can definitely paint with one of these paint pens. And so I am just coloring in two black circles, trying to make them thick enough, but not messing up that perfect circle. Now they had circles inside of circles inside of circles for their tires, which I thought kind of looked weird because that's not really like what a tire looks like. So I'm just using an ink pen here and I'm trying to draw like rims on the tire because that makes more sense to me and I have no idea if I did it right. I just went with what I thought. <laughs> and then I thought I could go in there with my silver metallic um, paint pen and give this some bling to the rims. But unfortunately, this silver paint pen is old and it was completely out of paint. I kept trying and trying and trying and I was not getting anywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have any other silver paint. But since I can't get it to work, um, I decided to go in with the next best thing and I'm using some of this um, chalk paint um, an elephant. So it's a gray color. And so that's going to be pretty close, but it's also requiring me to go in with a little paintbrush and hand paint that on, which it wasn't too difficult and definitely doesn't have to be perfect. I'm definitely going for a rustic vibe with this little red truck. And there are, um, there are my rims, but then you can see the exposed, um, the particle wood or whatever it is um, behind. So I'm just going in with that paint pen again and coloring in the little triangles with my black paint pen to try to make that look like maybe a shadow. And we have tires. Now I left the other side the way it is so that I can see how they had it painted. So I'm using my black paint pen and I'm drawing the door on kind of like they had their door. And my plan here is to draw the features on with my black paint pen. And then when I paint over it, I'm hoping that you'll still be able to see these details through, but they'll be kind of subtle. So I did the, the back of the truck, the doors, the door handle, um, the hood. And I even added a few more details that like weren't even on the other side, like on the bumper there, just to give it a little bit of structure. Now I want this to be a little red truck. So I'm going to use this crimson chalk paint, what's left of it from Waverly, but I want it to be that dark red color that um, the other little red trucks were instead of the bright red. And so I'm going to use some of this elephant um, gray chalk paint to mix with my crimson to give me that nice um, darker red color. And that's what I'm going to go in and paint. And I'm just painting over that paint pen. And you can see how that black paint is um, showing through but it's not real obvious. And that is exactly what I was going for. And I'm kind of going all over avoiding the areas that I have to do any detail work there. And honestly, at this point, I kind of forgot about the bumpers. And so here I am <laughs> with my little tiny paintbrush trying to get that just perfect. And it probably didn't need to be perfect because I do um, go in there and put the bumpers on that as well. And the bumpers definitely were necessary. It gave it like so much more um, dimension and depth with the bumper sticking out. And so here I am touching up around the tires, trying not to mess up my black tires too much. And trying to dry off any excess paint. I want 
those details to shine through and they do exactly how I wanted them. And then I remembered the bumpers. Oh yeah, the bumpers. So I'm painting the bumpers too, also around the edges with that um, crimson and elephant together. Um, and that should be good. Now, I always finish the back of my projects and I totally did not with this one. It just got a little too complicated. Now, these are the gold rub-ons that they have at the Dollar Tree. And I wanna put this USA on the door of my little red truck. But I'm scared because I've seen about a 50-50 success rate with other crafters on YouTube. Either these are a total win or a total fail. And I don't wanna mess up my paint job that I just did. So I tested it on the back. <laughs> it worked. So I am putting that USA on the door, just using a popsicle stick and scraping all over. And this is the first time I've used one of these like metallic rub-on transfers. It turned out beautiful. I was very impressed. Like if you don't have a Cricut, those are definitely the way to go. Look how pretty that is. And here are my bumpers. You can kind of see where um, the hot glue had been on them before, the little streak. But when I hit it with the sanding block, um, it really went away. So I just sanded both of those down. And my EM burning through those batteries on my hot glue gun tonight. And I'm just using some wood glue and hot glue. It ran out of batteries. It should beep when it runs out of batteries so that you know, but it doesn't. So I didn't have very much hot glue there, but I am attaching that back bumper. And see how much cuter that makes that with the bumpers on there? I'm glad that I remembered to attach those for sure. And we have our little red truck. Isn't it so much cuter than the other side? I really love how this turned out. But then I'm like, what am I going to do with this little red truck? And I'm like, well, you know what I'm gonna do first, right? <laughs> I'm gonna distress it with some ivory chalk paint and my little chunky brush and give it a little dry brush all over. And I kind of, Gave it a little bit of a heavy texture there, but I'm going back with my baby wipe and taking off any excess. I'm also going in with my sanding block to really distress that and make it look cool. And then I really wanna go in around the edges of um, the cuts to bring out that detail of um, the little bumper sticking out and stuff like that. And that's what I'm doing here, just going around all the edges, really making that pop. And you know it's not my project if I didn't distress it, right? <laughs> there is my little red truck. And I was thinking about what I could do with it. But first, I need to put some stuff in the back of the truck. So I want to use these little laser cut stars that I got at the Dollar Tree. And they're so pretty. Look at those. I love them. But then I'm like, I need you know, like the wood, well, how do you know what that's called? Like the bed of the truck where they have the little wooden things that holds the stuff in the back of the truck. I have no idea. So my popsicle stick was too small and so I'm using this bigger popsicle stick, but it's too wide. And so I'm wondering if I can cut it, but when I cut it, it splinters pretty bad and I'm still not happy with it. I want something smaller. I don't want it to be like huge. I just want something for a little detail. So I decided to use one of these little dowels um, from the Dollar Tree and it's almost exactly the right length. And that combined with my popsicle stick, I think I can make the little bed of the truck. But I don't want them to be that natural wood. I'm gonna stain them with that antique wax from Waverly. And the dowel did not really wanna take the stain really very well but it did take it a little bit. And I'm also staining the popsicle stick because I'm gonna use that for that structure as well. So I plan on that going across and then cutting the popsicle stick to make the structures to go up. 
Now, like I was saying before, I usually cover the back of my projects, but since this is such an intricate cut, I really didn't know how I could cover up all that glitter, so I actually don't. I guess it works out okay. It was a tiny bit too long, so I used my miter scissors there to cut my dowel, and then I'm just using scissors to cut this popsicle stick that I stained. Um, in like four places to attach that to the back of the truck. And I'm just gonna use hot glue here to attach my little braces. And they're, I cut them different lengths and they're at different heights, which does cause me trouble here. <laughs> and so I try to glue that on with my hot glue gun. But the problem is that the two in the middle were like higher than the other ones, so they kind of stick out. So I'm just using my scissors here and I'm trying to carefully trim those, but since the glue was still wet, they did come unattached. So I have to pull them off and I have to start all over. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with crafting. So this time I'm gonna be very careful and I'm gonna get them on there all the same height so that I'll be able to attach that dowel to it properly. And now it looks better. I'm just peeling off the hot glue from my first attempt. And then I'm gonna use four dots of hot glue and attach that to the back of the truck. And now we have a place to put those little stars in the back of the truck. And I am trying to clean up. I had hot glue everywhere. <laughs> okay, girl. All right, so my plan is to put the stars in the back, but then I think they're beautiful in the wood, but then they kind of match in with the wood bed of the truck. So I decided to go in with this ocean chalk paint by Waverly and just paint half of them blue. That'll go with my 4th of July red, white, and blue anyway and then leave half of them the natural wood because they're so pretty. And they painted pretty well. They really only need one coat of that ocean. And then I am just gonna glue those into the back of my truck as soon as I get them dry here. And I'm just gonna kind of alternate them blue wood, blue wood. And I thought the best way would just be to glue them to the structure that I just made. So I'm just gonna start gluing those on to the little popsicle sticks there on the back. Just at a random pattern and trying to alternate the different patterns. And I'm just attaching those with hot glue. And I was alternating colors, but I don't know what I was thinking because I put two blue ones next to each other, so I don't like that. So I'm gonna go in and pop that one off and replace that with a wood one. And then that'll leave me with a blue one and a wood one for like the next row. And six was definitely enough to fill up the back of the truck with the stars. And I'm glad we did that instead of the flag it gave another little fun element to this little red truck. Now, I don't have a hanger or anything on there anymore, and so I was trying to determine what I could make out of this guy. Like I said, this project evolved. And so I was thinking maybe a reef, like an indoor reef for my house, and attach the little red truck to the front. So I have one of these, um, reefs from the Dollar Tree. It is not very circular. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more even. And then my plan is just to attach the truck to the front. Now the problem is, is this is the only bow I have. This is an old bow. I think I got it at Dollar Tree maybe a couple years ago. And it's a cute flag pattern, but the red and white stripes are way too bold to go with that truck the way that I painted it. It's that darker color red, and it doesn't really go with that bow. 
Now, I'm not a big fan of making bows. I'm not that great at it. So I'm like trying to find a way that maybe I can use this bow. And so the blue and white stars is fine. It was this ribbon that totally didn't work. Well, I have a little bit of that custom color of red chalk paint left, and I know that you can chalk paint fabric. And so I am going over that bright red stripe with that darker custom color um, red, and my paint was almost dried up, but I had just a tiny bit of paint left and it actually worked out. And I know I'm getting it all over that white ribbon in the middle, but I wasn't a big fan of that either. I didn't think that really went with the vibe of my wreath. And so I'm gonna cover that up so I don't care that I got the paint on there. And I had exactly enough paint left to make that a darker color of red. And I am gonna use this little burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree to replace that white stripe. And I am just gonna do that by using hot glue to attach it. And this was incredible how much it changed this cheap bow and made it look um, more rustic and high end. I, I was very impressed. So I am got both sides glued down and I'm just trimming the edges. Now I just have to go back and attach that to my blue and white stars. And I think it's going to be way more fitting um, to go with my reef. Now I don't really want to use that cheap little tie that came with it. I'm gonna use some twine and I am just tying that off to get the bow all together again. And I cannot believe how much it improved the appearance of that bow. It's just crazy. And then I just double tied that to keep it together. I really didn't like the fact that it just had the one piece of twine um, in the middle of the bow. I thought it needed something else. So I'm gonna use this burlap ribbon. It's the skinnier one from the Dollar Tree. And I am just gonna cut that to size and hot glue that around the bow. And it gave even a little bit more texture to that bow. I love any of the burlap ribbons from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cool. And there's our new bow, isn't it cute? I was so glad I was able to use it. So I'm just deciding where I want it. I think I want it over on the right side here and I'm just gonna use that leftover twine from tying it off to tie it to my reef. And trim off the excess. Now at this point I was thinking, what else do I need to add to this reef? Now I used those flowers for that look, that the planter with the little red truck. And remember I had those little red, white, and blue berries left over that I didn't really use. And I'm like, oh, those might be cute. So I decided to try it to see if I like it. And they do match the colors perfectly with my wreath, but I got them on there like that. And then I was like, you know, sometimes enough is enough. Sometimes I like things more simple than I like things busy. And so I decided not to use them. Let me know below whether you would have used the little berries or not, or if you would have just left it plain. And then I'm just cutting a piece of the jute twine and just making a simple hanger for our wreath. I love the vibe of that wreath. It is so cute. Okay, up next, we are gonna use one of my go-to's window clings to make an easy 4th of July sign, and it's so pretty. For subscribing. Okay, today, I want to do some not only really easy 4th of July projects, but really inexpensive. So I'm gonna be using all items from the Dollar Tree and these are gonna be quick, fast, and easy. So I have this sign from the Dollar Tree. It has glitter all over the side of it. And with the frame there, it's not quite big enough for what I wanna do but I don't wanna leave it like that on the back of my art. So I'm just gonna use some of this cheap contact paper from Dollar Tree and the wood grain and just cover the back. It's a little extra and you totally don't have to do this step, but it does make it look more like a finished prod, um, product. Um, and that's what I really like to do. So I just cut it a little bit larger than the back that I was trying to cover there and it was fighting me a little bit, but I got it on there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is just the back. This is just me being extra. 
And I'm just going to kind of push it down into all the creases and then just go in with an X-Acto knife and cut off the excess. And it'll give me a nice clean back for this artwork project that I want to do today. So I, I'm going to use the back of it and I just want to paint that um, ivory. So I'm going to use the ivory chalk paint by Waverly. And the back of these signs are really easy to paint. Um, it's probably, you can kind of see the, the brown um, peeking through a little bit. So it will probably require more than one coat. But I um, just cleaned up my mess there. That The chalk paint on my silicone mat comes off, but you kind of have to clean it up right away. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be there forever because this chalk paint dries really fast. So I got a good coating. I'm just going to kind of do the edges too, just in case you can see that. I really like these signs. I think this was the last one that I had because they're thicker looking than the normal Dollar Tree signs because they have that extra frame around the edges. I have used them for other projects and I really liked how they turned out. So again, I'm going in with a second coat of that ivory chalk paint so I can get full white coverage on this sign. And I needed a couple signs um, to decorate in my kitchen for the 4th of July. And so I thought I would use window clings and items I got at the Dollar Tree to make some really quick, easy crafts. So I'm just going to go over the surface of the sign now with some Mod Podge mat. And I'm going to use this great big decal from um, Dollar Tree that says One Nation. And it's really colorful. It's really pretty. And I'm just smoothing that down, trying to get any air bubbles out. And then I'm going to Mod Podge over the window decal to secure it to the sign. And this is such an easy way to, to make a wood sign and to decorate with. You don't have to have a Cricut. You don't have to have any special equipment. Um, just some of the decals from the Dollar Tree. And there were some there's some really good ones this year. So I'm giving that Mod Podge a dry with my heat gun. Making sure that it is good and secure. I was trying to decide if I needed to go in with another coat of Mod Podge and then I decided it's probably a good idea. So I'm going in with a second coat just to make sure I don't want that decal to um, pop off the sign. I want it to be secured on there and to look like it is like part of the sign. And so I'm just giving it a dry. Now I thought it was a little plain and so I decided to um, make it really, I think this makes them look kind of farmhouse, kind of, just something extra. They're the wood half beads and I get them on Amazon. And I actually have this size because I had them for another project and I didn't know how big they were gonna be and they were way too big. So I was actually looking for a reason to use these. And so I'm just using my hot glue gun and I am just gluing down the corners and then I'm gonna kinda do the middle and then I'm just gonna kinda do a bunch of them at once and try to evenly space them. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but the look of the sign, you know, is rustic farmhouse. It's, it's not supposed to look perfect. So then I'm just doing the other corners and I'm going to do the same thing on the sides where I do the one in the center and then just kind of do in between the corner and the center and just kind of evenly space them. They're a little wider spaced out on the sides, which is fine. Just what, it's always a good idea though to lay them out in advance like this so you know exactly the plan and you don't end up like towards the end of a line and it won't fit. And so I'm doing the same thing there on all four sides. And I'm just using a very small dot of the hot glue just to secure them on there. They're not very heavy. And I'm really glad I added these wood half beads to the sign. It really made the sign like extra special. 
I'm just trying to clean up some of the strings of hot glue I got there so that when I paint over them that it's not super obvious. So now I'm going to go in again with that ivory chalk paint by Waverly and I am going to paint all of those half beads in the same ivory color. And I really, I've, I've used um, the smaller wood beads on another frame project and I love how they turn out. They're really fun to distress because of all that texture that you're adding to the sign and um, it really has a great finished product. So I'm just going in there with my brush and getting all the sides of all of those. Then I want to distress it. Now I normally distress with antique wax, but I'm actually going to use um, Elephant Chalk Paint by Waverly because the background of the decal was distressed in gray. So I thought I would go with that. You could kind of see like on the One Nation that it was distressed in gray. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go in there and distress with the matching color. So I'm just going in with a dry brush, chunky brush with that gray paint and trying to get all the texture and then going in with a baby wipe to wipe off any excess. Now, if you ever get too much of the dark color you're trying to distress with, you can always go in with the original color with the chunky brush as well. And that's what I'm doing here and add some more ivory to some of the places that I thought were a little too dark. And you can kind of go back and forth until you get it exactly the way you want it. And I'm kind of distressing over the decal too, which kind of makes it even look, you know, more like hand painted on there. And that is all there is to it. I'm just going to add a hanger. I'm going to use some of this jute twine from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to make a hanger on the back of it. So I'm just cutting off a piece and then I'm going to use um, my ruler to kind of figure out where I need to hang it because I want to make sure that it hangs like center. And that's what I'm doing there. And I'm just going in with my stapler, tying a knot in the twine so it doesn't come loose, and then stapling those equal distances so that it'll hang like directly in the middle of the sign. And that sign is done. It turned out great. That turned out so lovely. I think the wood beads were the secret weapon there. Okay, I'm going to get all creative on you now and we're going to do a tropical flag with some lays from the Dollar Tree. So I was looking for some creative ways to make American flags. And I, my Dollar Tree had these red, white, and blue lays. They come three to a package, so three for a dollar. And I thought I could make a really cute flag out of these. Um, I bought three packages of three, so that's like a total of nine lays, and that worked out to be exactly about what I wanted, and I want to try to do an American flag, like, shape with the red, white, and blue lays, so that is going to involve dismantling them. <laughs> it would be a lot easier if they carried red, white, and blue like lays, but all of my Dollar Trees had was bright colors. One of them recently got a blue one in, but of course, after I finish this, but um, that's going to save you so much time. So what I'm doing is just cutting the string. The string is really thin and just taking it all apart. I'm saving the little white spacers because I will need to space out in between um, the flowers. And then I'm also sorting them into red, white, and blue. I thought it would make it easier when I go to put it together. Now that string was really thin and weak, so I decided to use this um, twine, jute twine from the Dollar Tree, and I thought that that would make it easier to string and it would make it a stronger project. Um, I'm just guessing about how long I want it, and I decide that three feet long, I want it to be fairly large. 
Um, and I want to do like red stripe with red flowers, you know, white stripe with white flowers, and then the blue quadrant with the blue flowers. And that is the goal here. So I don't really know if I have enough, but I just start stringing them. Now, the way that it was put together before, um, they used two flowers between each spacer. So two flowers, spacer, two flowers. So that's what I'm doing. And I just tied um, a knot on the end of the twine, like a double knot, so that that would not fall off. And then I just start stringing. I started with white and red. So, cause you know, that's gonna be most of the flag. And I thought I could go from there um, with how much I need. So this is time consuming. It took me probably, oh gosh, I don't know, 45 minutes to string all these. It's kind of like stringing beads. Um, it's not hard. It's just time consuming. So put a good song on, put a good YouTube show on, and uh, just start stringing. I have, um, I got one of those Echo Shows for my workbench where I can watch YouTube videos, and I freaking love it. It makes crafting go so fast. So I got some red and white ones strung, and then I'm like, okay, I need the rest. So what you missed there is I went in and I cut all of them. So I'm using a total of all nine lays. I sorted them into red, white, and blue, and those are all the little plastic spacers. And so I'm starting new lines, um, measuring three feet, and I'm gonna keep stringing. So they don't, you know, go very far when you do two at a time. I don't know if you would get the same effect if you would do one um, between each spacer, I think it would be like a way less full like lay look, but um, that's what I'm doing here is I am stringing lots of white and lots of red stripes. And I kind of just string them all the way with white and red. I kind of, when I'm done with one, I would kind of put one up to the other one to make sure that I have the same amount of flowers because I don't want them looking all light, lopsided when I go to hang them up. And I wish I could have strung them this fast. It was a lot of stringing. That's why I have this so sped up for you. And I get to a point where I'm almost out of white and I'm like, well, I could do like a partial line of white and then a partial um, line of blue, and then we'll start in on the blue part of our flag. So I'm stringing what white I had left, and then I'm just gonna change that string into blue. And I really didn't have this mapped out, I was just kinda winging it, so I didn't really know how many stripes of blue I wanted, and so I'm just kind of seeing um, what I can do here. I know I'll have a blue stripe on that white one, and then I'm gonna use the, the rest of the red flowers that I have left here. And then I'm gonna change that one to blue, and that's gonna give me two stripes of blue for my flag. And when I get to the end, I just tie it off and leave a little bit of string on there. Then I was like, no way is two stripes of the blue gonna be enough. So I pull off the same amount of red flowers that I did the blue um, on the other two, and I am doing another strand of blue here. And there was a little bit of math involved in this project <laughs> by making sure that you had the same amount of flowers on the lines. But as long as you measure your um, cord right, you're gonna be pretty good to go. I was using that giant needle I just had laying around my house. Um, I think that makes it a lot easier because you can go through the fabric of the flower. Then I decided to use one of these five gallon paint sticks for the top. I picked these up at Walmart. I can't, I can't remember how much they were, maybe a dollar or two for a package. They're really cheap. 
and but I don't want that little handle part on there so I am just going to cut off the end of that and give it a sand and this is going to give me something to hang all those lays on to make my American flag and I cut it a little crooked so it was involving a little bit of sanding here with my little sanding block from the Dollar Tree to try to make it look kind of even. <laughs> Good enough. Okay, so I don't wanna leave it just raw like that. So I'm gonna use some of this antique wax from Waverly that I get at Walmart, and I'm just gonna give it a super quick stain. This stuff, you don't have to wait for it to dry. It dries super fast, and it really brings out the wood and makes like a paint stick like that, a paint stir stick actually look like it's high end. So I just did the front, and I'm doing the top and the bottom edges. And that part is done. So I'm just gonna like start seeing. I didn't leave enough string on there to actually tie it and I realize it here. So I'm gonna have to hot glue. And I really didn't measure how long the stick is. So I'm kind of trying to see how much space I can have in between each one. And I think it ended up, I did a string every two inches. So I'm just starting to line those up. About how I like them. And I didn't really want the lays hanging off, so I'm kind of doing this upside down. They're gonna be hanging the other direction. And so I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun and I am just gonna start hot gluing those on every two inches. And here are the rest of the lays. So at this point, I have three um, rows of the blue and I am gluing those all on. And this flag project was so much fun and it turned out so cute, I really love it. It makes quite a statement. Just cutting off the excess twine here and just tying more of that jute twine on the ends to make a little hanger. Then I was like, it didn't look right with the three. I needed four, there needed to be a bigger blue quadrant. It just, there was something missing with the flag shape. So I just pulled that one off, pulled off the white flowers and strung some more blue on. Cause I had plenty of blue left over. And that made it look way more flag, right? USA flag, right? So I am just gonna glue that back on. I have that lay flag hanging by my front door right now and I absolutely love it. Okay, the last DIY we have today is going to be an easy flag DIY using rulers from the Dollar Tree. So I have four packages of these rulers from the Dollar Tree. And I thought these would be really easy to make an American flag out of. I even for a little bit thought about just using them as they are because they are red and blue already with stripes, but I decided I didn't really want to go that route. So I am just peeling off the ruler parts on these and it leaves you with, it's flat on one side and it has like a little ridge on the other side. And then it also has the hole on one end but they're super easy to peel off these stickers and it gives you a nice piece of wood for 50 cents a piece. Now I had four packages here and I'm kind of trying to decide how many I need and I ended up only using um, three of the packages, which was six rulers. And I'm just kind of trying to figure out, I was thinking that if I use the extra two, it was gonna be more of a square and not really a rectangular flag shape. So I'm just kind of measuring and thinking about what I want my dimensions of my flag to be. And then I decided to ditch those two and just use the three packages. Then I'm trying to decide if I want the open circles to be on alternate sides or if I want them to be 
on the same side and I determined that I wanted to put them all on the same side. And then I wanted to decide if I wanted to use like the flat side as the front of my sign. And that's what I ended up going with. So the back has these little um, notches that are sticking out and that's what I'm applying the glue to. And then I'm just using some of these medium size um, popsicle sticks to secure it together just with hot glue. And over on the left, you'll notice that I covered up the um, openings on the rulers because I want to try to fill that in. I don't really want to leave that open like that. And I thought if I put the popsicle stick behind it, then I can just use some of this spackle from the Dollar Tree and just fill in those holes. And it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to go with like a rustic, you know, farmhouse vibe for this flag anyway. So just a little bit of speckle in each one, and then that's all I'm going to do. And constructing this was super easy using the popsicle sticks. And again, those are the medium-sized popsicle sticks, and I got them at Walmart. They're not the great big ones. They're kind of in between, and they were the perfect length for this project. And then I'm going to use some of this painter's tape, and I am just going to mark off the quadrant up on the top left to do my blue part of my flag. And I am just going to paint that with um, the blue chalk paint. It's called Ocean by Waverly. And I'm just going to give that a good coating. The, this is the first time I've worked with the rulers from the Dollar Tree and they're really good quality wood and they're really easy to paint. And you can see how square they all are. They're all like exactly the right size. I guess because they're a ruler, huh? <laughs> and then I'm just going in with my heat gun and giving that a dry. I was trying to determine if I needed to do another coat of the blue, but it looked pretty good. So I went with it. And then I'm gonna use the Crimson and the Ivory Chalk Paint by Waverly to do the stripes. And I wanna make sure that's really good and dry there before I put some tape over it, but I'm just gonna tape that so that my stripes do not go onto that part of the flag. And um, I'm gonna use this painter's tape to um, do the stripes, but first I thought it would be a good idea just to do the whole flag in the ivory color. Um, that will cover up, you know, the wood grain and um, be a good base coat for the red stripes as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Giving it a good healthy coat of the ivory chalk paint. And just speeding up the drying process on that. I love the chalk paint just because it's so fast to work with and I get impatient waiting for the paint to dry for sure. So the combination of the fast drying paint and my heat gun gets me moving. Okay, so I wanna get that really good and dry so that I can use my painter's tape to um, mark off the lines. And I'm actually gonna do um, the stripes the same as the width of the ruler. And that is about the same as two of my pieces of painter's tape. So I am just putting both of those on there to mark off my lines I want to leave white. And I thought about doing more stripes, but I thought this would be the easiest way. And I just scraped that down with my Cricut and I'm just doing my first light coat with that ivory chalk paint and um, so if there was any bleeding it would be the ivory paint that bleeds. My paintbrush broke and I'm like "Ooh, I can use the end of this for wood. I am definitely saving that. <laughs> and then I'm going in with that crimson chalk paint to do my red stripes. And whenever I work with the crimson or the red it's really hard to get like a good coverage. 
but I'm hoping that since I did the white first, that that's gonna help give us good coverage here. And it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna make sure it's good and dry. And this is the most satisfying part when you get to pull off your tape and see all those pretty lines. And I did have a little bit of damage over there on my spackle end, but I just touched that up with the, what's left of my paintbrush. And just removing all of the painter's tape to give me this red and white stripe with my blue quadrant. And since I'm doing these all like super easy, no Cricut or anything required, um, I'm actually going to put stars on there, but I am going to um, hand paint them with just a white paint pen. You can always use, you know, the star stickers or whatever, or you can make a stencil. Um, since this is like a rustic farmhouse vibe, um, I think that the hand painted stars actually kind of go with it more than if you had perfect stars on there. So I'm just gonna use, I use just the wedge side and kind of the tip and all I do is just draw a star and then if there's any openings inside the star, I'll just fill it in. And I'm just kind of spacing out the top row. I don't do a very good job of spacing it. And I do realize that right about here where I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's not supposed to look perfect. But what I'm gonna do is just kind of alternate the stars the way they are on the flag. And I'm doing two rows of stars per ruler. And I am not good at hand painting things by far, but stars are pretty easy. And there we go. So we have an American flag. Um, the last step that I want to do to this after I get it dry is I do want to distress it. Um, I really like that I have a coastal farmhouse vibe in my house and I really like things to be distressed. And everything I'm doing today is like very farmhouse. So I'm going to use a dry brush, a chunky brush from Dollar Tree, and this Antique Wax by Waverly. And I like to go in on the edges. And then I kind of always want to kind of keep the same grain and then kind of go all over. I um, wanted my red stripes to be a little darker than they are, so I kind of went heavy um, on distressing the red stripes, and that kind of gave it, gave it a deeper color of red, which I was going for, and just kind of all over, and then I'm gonna go back over with a baby wipe and wipe off anything that I think is a little excessive on the distressing. And that's all there is to it. Now I just need to make a hanger for my sign. And I wanna make sure it's getting dry before I turn it over here. And I'm just gonna use this twine from the Dollar Tree and attach it with my staple gun. The first one I did not make long enough, but I got another one here. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the last one. I'm just gonna tie a knot and staple that to the back of my flag. And Easy peasy, we have a ruler flag and I think it turned out really cute. Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. I really appreciate you and I hope I gave you some fun ideas for 4th of July. And thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you could comment your favorite project below. Have a fabulous 4th of July.
in a minute. 